So I was just sitting in my room or whatever, just browsing on the computer because I didn't have anything to do today. But okay, I've been um, shouting him out, shouting them out for the last year now, and um, it's this guy named Reginald. He has his own um, YouTube soap opera called The Rainbow Connection. It's about like it's like a soap opera full of gay lesbians doing a damn thing in the um, South Carolina city or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So I, I I have been telling him for the last few weeks that whenever he does post the finale, the very last episode of the season, I've given my full review on everything and everybody. Well, some, well, whoever I can remember, and I will not keep my mouth shut. I will be giving them the real, and that's what it is. First of all, I got hip to them last year, and. You know what I'm saying? I had never heard of them until last year because they um he had wrote me on my wall. Well, not my wall, but on my comment thing on YouTube and asked me to check it out. So I did one, you know, late one night and I watched it and I was amazed. And, you know, I had made a video about it and this and that. So, um, the second season, which has been a very long one, started back in June um, of 2011. And it's just ending today. And it was a very long season, but you know, due to everybody's, you know, who plays on the on the show schedules and everything, it takes a while for him to upload an episode. Sometimes we have to wait a month or two before another episode comes out, which is fucking, you know, irritating because you know he leaves you on a cliffhanger with every episode, so it's so it's hard to sit there and wait for another episode. So I was so first of all, I'm just gonna touch on the three part finale. First of all, on some of my favorite things. First of all, I'm finally glad that Marlon finally got a date that he likes. <laughs> Cause these last few dates was one was cheap, one was in jail. So I'm glad he finally got a date that he likes. I'm so glad that um, Dominique got exposed for the dancing hoe that she is. I'm very glad that Jennifer put her on blast because it seems like um, Sydney is is a, is a cool chick, and it's sad that Dominique did her dirty like that. But my thing is. Jennifer was was kind of looking like she was thirsty just a little bit like she had like she was looking for too much You know, it's like she was trying to get a sip too much You know what I'm saying? She came out as being thirsty trying to expose Dominique when she needed to confront her own bitch You know what I'm saying? Because your bitch was cheating with Dominique So even though Dominique was disrespecting her own relationship and disrespecting hers I respected I would have respected you more um, Jennifer, if you would have confronted both Dominique and Simone, because Simone is just as wrong as Dominique trifling ass. So, either way it goes, I'm just glad that Dominique ass got exposed, and it looked like Jennifer whooped her ass, and I just kept rewinding that scene over and over and over again, because the simple fact that it looked like Jennifer was getting it in. And, you know, I've been waiting for them to fight anyway. Um, Mackenzie, the chick that, uh, first of all, he was First of all, she was playing Zenobia and McKin Zenobia and Cadence, who was my favorite favorite female character. First of all, I love myself some Cadence, but she, um, she was playing both of them. And turns out, a few people was looking for her because she was doing her own dirty deal, and she robbed some people named JP and Corey, and she set Rocky up for the kill. And then, you know what I'm saying, when they find out that it was really her that robbed them, she got her ass beat, you know. It turns out the chick that she was sleeping with, basically cheating on both Zenobia and Cadence, her name is Amy, and the bitches that Amy fucks with came in and beat Mackenzie's ass. So basically, Amy set Mackenzie's ass up, basically, and she was sleeping with her. That's really funny, right? Okay, then you got... Um, Wesley, he called, first of all, I don't really like the character of Wesley that much for some reason, I really don't. Hold on, y'all, I got a text. Oh, dang, okay. But yeah, um, hold on, well, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll I text the page. But yeah, um, so, I lost my train of thought. Wesley is, um, somebody that, um, Wesley, Wesley's a character that I really don't like that much for some reason. There's something about the character that I just don't like. But yeah, um, 
basically Wesley told Dimaggio that he was the one that burnt the club down and I honestly thought it was him who really burnt it down because the whole season he was hiding the damn gas caps and shit like that so I was wondering if he was really the one that burnt the club down turns out he was keeping a secret for Tay who was one of my favorite characters so basically Tay was the one that burnt the fucking club down but Wesley is taking the blame for it and that is wow I wonder why the hell would Tay want the club want to burn down the club so bad because you know as far as I'm concerned Tay and Demaje were friends but see Tay and Demaje hadn't even really been talking due to the whole Demir thing when Demir kidnapped Tay and this and that so that's kind of weird can't wait to see the um season three for this shit um let's see I hope I'm not forgetting anything because I'm just I'm just remembering everything that stood out to me basically um back to the Magia. I'm so glad that he took the era black ass the fuck down I am so glad that he, somebody finally took that bitch down because she was getting away with too motherfucking much okay first of all she tried to set Reagan up and everything then she started threatening Demir and everything I mean Reagan didn't even know what the fuck you know, she, you know, um, Reagan sell, sold the lithium to Sierra, but she didn't know that she was gonna, you know, drug Dimaggio. But when she drugged Dimaggio, then she just pulled Reagan into it. And it's like, what the fuck? Like, this bitch was blackmailing everybody. And I am so glad that Dimaggio basically, you know, took her to Buffalo Wild Wings and drugged her damn drink and scolded her ass for doing the same thing to him. And that was the day he did that thing in my opinion. Like that was one of my favorite scenes. I was so glad to see that bitch go down. And I hope her ass don't return for the next season. Cause if she does, I'm gonna read her ass the whole season. But you know, that's what it is. Um let's see. What else? What else? What else? What else? What else? What else? That was weak and juicy that happened. Turns out that Mackay and and Aiden were behind the blogs. And I honestly thought that that blog, blog storyline was dropped for some reason. Because we hadn't seen anything about the blog in a long time. So I thought that storyline was dropped. But it turns out it was Aiden and Makai. But it's so funny because I don't I don't know why I didn't put it past Aiden's ass to sit there and, and put everybody's business out. Because he did Gavin like a dog pretending to be Gavin's friend and everything. And then tearing up letters and shit and, and telling his business. So I don't know why it wasn't surprising to me that Aiden was behind the whole blog and things uh, right along with Makai. But Makai kind of surprised me because of the simple fact you know it is what it is so that's crazy to me you know what I'm saying it's real crazy um yeah oh that's oh my phone still vibrating because Johnny texts me but yeah I'm texting Johnny baby I keep saying I'm texting baby but yeah so um it's crazy how that happened and then Jarrell found out the truth and everything and he's gonna blackmail them to his advantage so that's really crazy but I don't I think that Jarrell is a character that needs a little bit more storyline because his character is kind of just there for me like what's his purpose you know he had a, a promising storyline with the whole Brianna thing when he tried to kill her but what, where the fuck is Brianna you know what I'm saying where the fuck did she go like after you know after it was revealed that Jarrell was the one that tried to kill her the bitch disappeared where the fuck is she you know what I'm saying so I'ma need Mr. Reggie to tell me what the fuck happened to Brianna you know what I'm saying I don't know what the fuck happened to her then Cadence she sabotaged Tatiana with the investors or whatever and then when it was finally her time to meet up with them Tatiana got revenge and cut off all her damn hairstyles basically sabotaging our whole damn meeting and that was so motherfucking funny Kayla didn't know what to do with herself that was that shit was hilarious um let me see I don't really care about the Kareem and Kendrick shit. The shit was just, I really didn't care. Because number one, I don't like Kendrick and I really don't like Kareem. And I'm going to tell you why I don't like Kareem when I get towards the end. Just talk about the season as a whole. I really didn't care about this scene. Um, the scene, the two scenes of this whole damn finale that touched me the most. I'm going to start off with the one when Jaden and Rocky met up with each other. And Jaden was like... 
he didn't want to um, get involved with Rocky because he was he was cheated on. So therefore, he didn't want to be the reason why somebody else feels the pain that he has been feeling for the last few months. And you know, Jaden really wasn't trying to. I mean, not Jaden. Rocky wasn't trying to hit it because he really likes Jaden. This and that, not knowing that his girlfriend, that Rocky's girlfriend Heather, is standing right there watching. The scene was epic when the song started playing. It just made me want to fucking cry. I felt bad for her ass. And I don't even like Heather. I felt bad for the bitch. Because it was... The shit was off the chain. Like, I just could not believe that was happening. And then the song started playing. And then that's when she met up. That's when Heather met up with Rocky. She confronted him about Jaden. And then she pulled a knife out on him. And then a the knife fell to the ground and had blood on it. Now, I don't know if she killed Rocky or not, but we'll find it. We'll probably find out in season three whether he's dead or not. I hope he's not. And I hope that Heather ass goes to an insane asylum. But the thing that got me. The thing that got me was when the last scene when Jaden was taking the pills and he overdosed. He was overdosing on the pills. And in the midst of him doing it, Tristan was calling and saying that, you know, basically obviously Jaden had text you know, had called him or whatever. And basically he was trying to get in back in contact with Jaden to let him know that he was back in town. But in our reality while Tristan is trying to get in contact with Jaden, it's like basically Jaden was killing himself. He fell back in the tub. I'm, I was hoping that somebody ran in the bathroom and picked him up out the tub to save him and rushed him to the hospital. But all I know is that Reginald already told me on Twitter that he doesn't, like I asked him, is some people going to be cut for the next season or some people going to be staying? He really don't know right now. But just watching it, I, first of all, I hope that Jaden is okay. I don't want him to die. He's one of my favorite characters on the whole show. And I want to see what's going to happen. Now, it's something else that I forgot to mention. And I just thought about it now. It was the scene with Gavin and Taze boyfriend Trey, Dave was making a connection. But I didn't really care about this scene too much because mm, whatever. So my take on the season as a whole since it's closed, I like the whole thing. The only problem with me and everybody else who watches this is that the videos are only nine to ten minutes long and it's too short. And you know, since YouTube allows you to at least have fifteen minutes, I would suggest that it is at least fifteen. Or if not 15, at least 20 because it gives you more time. You don't have to cut so many things out. And I know you got the viewers to have your videos to be. <laughs> I'm taking the bubble back when I get finished. But yeah. Um, it would be better if you make your videos longer because of simple fact. Um, the videos will be the videos longer. It will help because you have a lot of tea in each video, and we already know that it takes like a month, like a few weeks to a month until you know from episode to episode. So it would be better if you just give a, a longer episode because you know due to the schedules of the people that play on the show, we have to wait a while before we see another episode. So it won't be so hard for us to wait if you make the episode at least 15, 15 to twenty minutes longer. It that'll help a lot. Um, as far as the characters are concerned, um, let's see. Jaden is my favorite character. I don't have any problems with him, but I really want to know what happened with him and Antonio. I'm kind of glad that y'all played him up with Rocky, but I really want to know what happened to Antonio. As far as Mackenzie, she's a dirty, low-down motherfucker. I don't like her nor Zenobia. Um, Cadence... I like her because of her because of the person that plays her. That's probably what it is, cause she's a low down she's a low down helper too. Sabotaging motherfuckers with investors. But you know, it, I think it's the person that betrays the character that makes me like her a lot. So I guess. Marlon is hella funny. He brings the comedy. He brings the comic relief. So I can deal with that. It, it's a good thing to have somebody that's funny to balance out all the hot drama that's going on on the show. Gavin, he's one of my favorite characters. He reminds me of those soap opera characters. That's the good guy that has a lot of flaws. So I think for the character of Gavin, y'all should just give him his own love interest instead of having him being a side piece to everybody else. Because I just think that he's worth way more than that. 
Um, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, who else? Kendrick, don't like him. He's a bum ass bitch, don't like him. No disrespect to the person that plays him. Kareem, the reason why I don't like him is because he just, ugh. I know that Reginald told me that he is a good guy, but when I think, ever since that scene with, between him and Gavin being in the bathroom and him going off on him, I did not like that. And that's another thing that really pissed me off this whole season. Why was everybody so mad? You know, why was everybody caring so much about what the fuck Gavin and Tristan did? That was nobody's business. Everybody was so mad with Gavin. Uh, true enough, you know, I'm sitting up here thinking everybody friends with each other, so I would think that they would stay out of it, but everybody was so mad with Tristan and Gavin, like, get the fuck out of here, you know what I'm saying? Makai, he was a great villain, and I think that you, I think that the villain of Makai, just speaking from a writer's point of view, needs to be utilized just a little bit more. You know how we watch soap operas and you had that one resident villain that does this? You know, does then you have this one male villain that just wreaks havoc on everybody's lives. So I would think that you should do a little bit more with Makai. Instead of having him chasing that chasing up behind Jaden or whatever, you should play him more as the resident villain. As far as Sierra, she I hate her, but she does the villainous role great. I love her to death. I well, no I don't I don't love her to death, but I love villains. But some villains are just uh and she really does a good job at making me hate her ass because I think you should play her up more as the villainess. But then again, I just said I ain't going to have back on the show. Blah. Um, Jennifer is thirsty. Dominique is trashy. Sydney seems cool. Simone. Child. What the fuck? She's just there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, she's just there. Like, I need to see more conflict about this whole Jennifer, Sydney, Dominique, and Simone quad. You know what I'm saying? Aiden, messy as hell. But the person that plays Aiden is very cool. He follows me on Twitter, and, you know, he's cool as hell, so whatever. Um, Wesley, you gotta make me like him. Because I'm very indifferent to him. I don't really care about the character that much. It's something about the character that I really don't care about. You know, he had a little edge to him when I thought that he burned down the, the club. But other than that, I don't really care what happens. Um, let's see. It's so many people on the show that I can't even... I hope I, where the hell did Brianna go? I don't know where the hell she went. You know what I'm saying? Like, after we found out that Jarell black ass was trying to kill her, her ass, poof, she gone. What the hell happened? You know? Let's see. Cece, I loved her rape storyline. She played the hell out of a rape victim. I love that shit. I think... My mama cooking her ass up up in there. She just got off of her. Can't wait to go up in there. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. So. Um, let's see. Yeah, let's see. Um, as far as Cece, she played the role of a rape victim very good. And I love that. You know, I think that brought more depth to her character. And I liked it. So, I want to see more of her this and that. Um, Jarrell, give him more to do. Like I said, the character of Jarrell is just there. And it's another girl named, it's a, it's two other characters that be popping on and off. One of them is named Chris, and I don't know what the other chick name is. I don't know their names. I do not know their names for nothing, but they just be popping up. And I don't so much care for them either. I just, I, I guess those are one of those reoccurring people that just pop up every now and then for trouble. Antonio, where is he? You know what I'm saying? Like, I thought he had major potential, so I only seen him in like two or three episodes, so where the fuck is he? Um, I hope I'm not forgetting anybody, because he got so many damn people on the show. Reagan, she was, she's obviously a drug dealer, so that's, that's something else to work with, but... We'll see. That's if she comes back. I don't really see that big of a future for her. But if she does, I'm willing to see what's going to happen. Trey, I think that he has potential to... I really would like to see more for him to be written. I really would have liked to see him and Tay's relationship a little bit more on the show. Because I like Tay and he's one of my favorite characters. But now I don't know what to think because he burned down a fucking club. So therefore, we might not even be seeing him that much. So with Trey getting closer to Gavin... And Tay being Gavin's friend. That's some drama for some. That's some real 
fucking drama. Dimaggio, he is the resident person, perfect patty, I guess. Perfect patty, I guess. The resident. He is always the one that you come to for advice. He owns the club. He got this. He got that. Everybody likes him. So that's that's the type of character he is. And I want to see him more involved in storylines as real. But I think that he. I think with this finale that you showed me that he's got a lot more to do than I think he is. Um, let me see. I hope I'm not forgetting anybody. I'm just hoping I'm not. I'm hoping I'm not. I'm hoping I'm not because there's so many damn people. But. All in all, season two was amazing. Like, it's a big step up from season one. You can tell that everybody's getting their acting a little bit better, and it's just getting a, it's just getting a lot better. So, I'm looking forward to season three, and whenever Reggie sees this, I hope he tells me when he plans to put out season three. I know he said early winter, but what is early winter? I really need to know that. But... As far as I'm concerned, I like to say thumbs up to the Rainbow Connection. For all of my watchers who watch me, if you've never seen this shit before, I'm going to put the information, the link at the bottom of the video after it's done uploading. And um, make sure y'all support um, him. He's a great writer. And, you know, we have, we have frequent conversations on Twitter. And I support him just like he supports me and mine. And I'm all for supporting other YouTubers. So... I hope you guys like the review. I'm out of here, you guys. Five, four, three, two, motherfucking one. Until next season, the Rainbow Connection. I'm out of here, you guys. Peace. I hope you took what I said into consideration. I'm out. Peace.